Hello, it is I, Andrew Johnson, and this, in fact, is the rise and 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 the slight fall and the dip and then the rise and the rise and the rise and the eventual death of that guy that ruled Israel 3,000 years ago, give or take half millennia. If that made absolutely no sense to you, then that does. Now, I am going to be talking about David. You know, that David that ruled, I think it was Israel, around 3,000 years ago. Give or take half a millennium, as I said. Now, this video is dedicated to people who find the Bible, church, ridiculously boring. Please consider this as a substitute, I guess you could say. Now, chapter 15, 71. Do not turn to, for I'm about to read it to you. Chapter 15. The Lord rejects Saul as king. Samuel said to Saul, I am the one the Lord sent to anoint you king over his people Israel. So listen now to the message from the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says. No, really, listen up. I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they waylaid them as they came up from Egypt. Now go, attack the Amalekites, and totally destroy everything that belongs to them. Do not spare them. Put to death men and women, children and infants, cattle and sheep, camels and donkeys. Whoa, 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 wait, whoa. What happened to that God of love and forgiveness, you know? Quick to forgive, slow to anger. This is like genocide by about hundreds of thousands of people. Roll the scripture that this could be found in, please. Thank you. Well, you see, in Exodus... These guys, the Amenites, Amalekites, Amalekites, stuff that sounds like insects. Yeah, these guys attack the Israelites pretty much without provocation. Yeah, by that I mean without provocation. Provocation? Provocation? Whatever. Anyway, so yeah, they did that, but this is not just like a grudge match between God and Amalekites, even though they did attack Israel. Not a good idea. Yeah, they also did stuff, uh, let's surprise, let's surprise to say that this could be labeled as a pornographic video if I described in any detail what these people would do. Whoa, 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 wait. Who are you? Why do you have a different shirt? And why do you know so much more than I do? Well, I'm you. Then why do you act so much differently than me? Andrew is... Simply choosing to play us differently, I guess. So then you are he that is Andrew. Yes, and so are you. But I'm talking about him in third person. Yet we are him, and why are you so... Why are you... Whatever. Anyway. So Saul summoned the men and mustered them to tell him, 200,000 foot soldiers and 10,000 men from Judah. Saul went to the city of Amalek and set an ambush in the ravine. Okay, folks, here's the plan. We will be having an ambush in this ravine sort of thing, and then we will have dotting the hills or sides, whatever you want to call it, all these hundreds of thousands of Israelites. Just over 200,000 to be exact. And there will be a slight, I'm just kidding, major chance of them blocking off the sides of the ravine like that. And then it being epic. And these Amalekites, Amalekites, yeah. Then he said to the Canaanites, Go away, leave the Amalekites so that I do not destroy you along with them. For you showed kindness to all the Israelites when they came up from Egypt. Ooh, and another element has entered the game. These other peoples. Yes, they've also been in there, but they showed kindness, I guess. So I guess we'll let them go and they won't be destroyed. Technically. So yeah, we'll let them through. Now on of the slaughter. So the Canaanites moved away from the Amalekites. Then Saul attacked the Amalekites, all the way from Havala to Shur. To the east of Egypt, he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive, and his, all his people he totally destroyed with the sword. But Saul and the army spared Agag, and the rest of the sheep and cattle, the fat calves and lambs, everything that was good. 
These they were unwilling to destroy completely, but everything that's despised and weak, they totally destroyed. Yeah, right, like is it for the win? Those insect sounding peoples like no longer exist. Donkeys, mules, everything that God said. No longer in existence. Then again, didn't he say that he should destroy everything? Why do that? Ah, eh, whatever. Party over. Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel. I am grieved that I have made Saul king, because he has turned away from me, and has not carried out my instructions. Samuel was troubled, and he cried out to the Lord all that night. Early in the morning, Samuel got up and went to meet Saul, but he was told, Saul has gone to Carmel. There he has set up a monument in his own honor, and has turned and gone on down to Gilgal. Yeah. Monument in own honor, pinnacle of victory parade. Praising yourself. Oh yeah, we did so good. I thought it was God that kind of cleared war on them. When Samuel reached him, Saul said, The Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instructions. Lesson for life. Sucking up to the prophet doesn't work too well. But Samuel said, What then is this bleaching of sheep in my ears? What is the lowing of cattle that I hear? Saul answered, The soldiers brought them from the Amalekites. They spared the best of the sheep and cattle to sacrifice to the Lord your God, but we totally destroyed the rest. Stop! Samuel said to Saul, Let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. Tell me, Saul replied. Samuel said, Although you were once small in your own eyes, did you not become the head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel. And he sent you on a mission, saying, Go, and completely destroy those wicked people, the Amalekites. Make war on them until you have wiped them out. Why did you not obey the Lord? Why did you pounce on the plunder and do evil in the eyes of the Lord? But I did obey the Lord, Saul said. I went on the mission the Lord assigned me. I completely destroyed the Amalekites and brought back Agag, their king. You know... I think by destroying your mind, this is something a little bit more like completely wipe them off the face of the earth. Or something like that. The soldiers took sheep and cattle from the plunder, the best of what was devoted to God, in order to sacrifice them to the Lord your God at Gilgal. That's the whole point. You did bring back the, again, mules. Ah, whatever. I'll let Samuel tell you off. But Samuel replied, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as obeying the voice of the Lord? To obey is better than to sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Then Saul said to Samuel, I ascend. Yes, yes you have. I violated the Lord's command and your instructions. I was afraid of the people, so I gave in to them. Now I beg you. Forgive my sin. Uh, you sinned against God, not Samuel. What do you expect him to do? And yes, for all those of you who are wondering, that statement that he just made was actually correct. Even before the cross and when we still had to slaughter sheep. Really glad we don't have to do that anymore. Anyway, that's still a correct statement that he just made. Which Samuel gets completely. And come back with me, so that I may worship the Lord. But Samuel said to him, I will not go back with you. You have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you as king over Israel. Hey, 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 can we get like a uh, replay of that last statement, except for with the, I think it's Beethoven, you know, the da 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 sort of thing, you know. Yeah, that. And the Lord has rejected you as king over Israel. As Samuel turned to leave, Saul caught hold of the hem in his robe. And a tour. Cheap robe. Well, they didn't exactly have, you know, sewing machines, synthetic fibers, common sense. Whatever. Why do you have to always have a answer to everything that I say? Well, it's my job. As I said, whatever. Hey, little guys, is this going to work? Yeah. Samuel said to him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today and has given it to one of your neighbors, to the one better than you. He who is the glory of Israel does not lie or change his mind, for he is not a man that he should change his mind. I 
I think he just discovered he should take God seriously. Saul replied, I have sinned. But please, honor me before the elders of my people and before Israel. Come back with me so that I may worship the Lord your God. So Samuel went back with Saul, and Saul worshipped the Lord. Then Samuel said, Bring me Agag, the king of the Amalekites. Agag came to him confidently, thinking, Surely the bitterness of death is past. But Samuel said, As your spoiled has made woman childless, so your mother will be childless among women. And Samuel put Agag to death before the Lord of Gilgal. Hey, even prophets can swing swords, and they get all the good lines. Really? What? Then Samuel left for Ramah. But Saul went up to his home in Gilbreth of Saul. Until the day Samuel died, he did not go to see Saul again, though Samuel mourned for him. And the Lord was grieved that he had made Saul king over Israel. And that was chapter 15 of 1 Samuel. Please stop. Well, anyway. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Can't wait for the Hobbit. And... There we go. See you next time.